There's something about homestyle Cantonese meals. Simple ingredients, great flavors that are just super nostalgic for me. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, dude is behind the camera and we're all about simple food, simple faith. A typical Cantonese style meal for me usually means one meat dish and one vegetable dish served with rice. I grew up with my mom cooking like multiple dishes along with a soup for dinner. And I always wondered like how on earth she was able to get like four or five dishes on the table, steaming hot with rice and a soup on the side. That just astounds me. I mean, today she doesn't do that anymore. I do all the cooking and I can only get like two dishes on the table. Today, we're gonna to give you some options for a typical Cantonese homestyle meal, but we're gonna start with the rice because the rice is everything. I cannot believe it's been five, over five years now since I purchased the Instant Pot. And when I bought the Instant Pot, I was looking for a new rice cooker with a stainless steel liner. And a friend suggested the Instant Pot because you can make rice in it. So that's why I bought the Instant Pot, was to make rice. Your Instant Pot will come with a rice cup. And usually any rice cooker will come with the same cup. It is not the same size as a regular measuring cup. So these cups, I think, measure 180 milliliters. Our family consists of three adults and two teens, but my teens don't eat a lot of rice. So we find that two rice cups is perfect for our family. You may have to adjust it to your family. We like to eat jasmine rice. It is a long grain rice and we find that it's just perfect for Cantonese style dishes. I like to wash my rice first and I use a colander and I just run water over it, stir it around and wash it until the water runs clear. Okay, so my rice is washed and put that in the liner of the Instant Pot. Make sure we get all the grains in there. Have you ever noticed the lines in your Instant Pot? These lines actually coincide with this cup. So if I'm gonna pour water straight in to make the rice, I just pour up to the two line. It's right down here. And that, I know some people won't believe me, but it's two cups of water because we want equal part rice to equal part water. Okay, we level out the rice first, the water, and you will see. Did it hit the two line? Yep. Ta-da! So you don't have to measure your water. You can use the lines on the Instant Pot. So if you use three rice cups of rice, you can pour water up to the three line. Four cups of rice, you pour it up to the four line. It's all equivalent. All right, putting the lid on, locking into place, making sure the sealing knob is on sealing. And I totally get that we have a rice button here, but I never use the rice button. I've had the Instant Pot for over five years, and I find that the method I'm gonna show you today is the best method for me. So I am cooking it on high pressure for four minutes. I'm setting a timer for 10 minutes because I want my rice to soak. And that's it. After the cooking is done, we are going to leave it to naturally pressure release for 10 minutes. Cooking rice in the Instant Pot is no quicker than doing it on the stovetop or using a rice cooker. It takes about 10 minutes to soak, five minutes to come up to pressure, four minutes to cook, and another 10 minutes for the pressure to release. And that's about on the stovetop as well. 18 minutes to cook and cover and bring up to a boil and all of that it takes about the same amount of time. After the cooking is done, the four minutes, then just let this number come up to 10 minutes. This is on keep warm now, and that's letting your pot naturally release the pressure. Okay, make sure that you do turn your Instant Pot off of keep warm after your 10 minutes is up. It's been 13 minutes, it's still okay, but if you keep it on for too long, it will continue to cook the bottom of your rice. 
and release any pressure if there's any left where there isn't any here. Usually it's all gone within 10 minutes. I always take these off because when it drops on the floor, it freaks me out every time. Right, so the rice is fully cooked and you can see all the kernels too. It's not super sticky. Even in the stainless steel pot, it doesn't really stick to the bottom, but you have to remove it right away. The longer you leave it in the pot, the more sticky it will get and it will stick to the bottom of the pot. A typical homestyle Cantonese meal usually consists of a protein, some leafy greens and rice. For the protein options, I've included a beef stir fry that you can do on the stovetop, my grandmother's chicken packets, and I also have three leafy green options for you as well. These are go-to family favorites for us and we hope that you will enjoy them as well. I'm going to slice up my beef. This is about a pound of beef flank steak and we're gonna cut it against the grain. And you can see that the grain is going, well, this way. I'm gonna cut it into a smaller size so that I can slice it easier. And we're just gonna, we don't wanna slice it too thin because we don't want the beef to overcook. About an eighth of an inch is how thinly you want to slice the beef. And actually to slice it easier, if you throw it in the freezer for about 20 minutes beforehand, it's much easier to slice. I'm just gonna put this into a bowl. and then I'm gonna go wash my hands before I marinate it. I'm adding two teaspoons of cornstarch. I'm just eyeballing, guys. About a tablespoon of a Shaoxing wine, and if you don't have Shaoxing wine, you can use sherry. One teaspoon of soy sauce. And we're just going to stir this up. So while the beef is marinating, I'm preparing the rest of my vegetables. I have about a thumb size piece of ginger that I'm slicing up thinly. I have one medium size onion I'm gonna slice. and three green onions. I don't know where these green onions come from, but they're like huge. GMO, dude. <laughs> we're gonna cut these into one inch pieces. And I think for um, these, I'm just gonna slice them up a little bit further. So I find with Chinese cooking, it is best to get all of your ingredients together before you actually start cooking, because the cooking part of it is really fast. So I'm preparing the sauce now. We want one tablespoon of oyster sauce. Wow! That might be a little bit more than a tablespoon. One tablespoon of dark soy. And if you don't have dark soy, you can use, just use regular soy because I've put too much oyster sauce. I won't put as much soy in. That's just me estimating. For all I know, it's more than a tablespoon. One tablespoon of Shaoxing wine. And if you don't have Shaoxing wine, you can use sherry, or if you don't have it at all, just omit it. It's up to you. It's not gonna make a huge difference. Two teaspoon of sesame oil. Two teaspoon of sugar. Two teaspoons of cornstarch. Two tablespoon of water. Just stir that and make sure that the cornstarch is dissolved in there. I had to bust out the whisk because my chopstick skills are not so great. I couldn't get all the lumps out. See, so much faster. All right, we're ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna heat up my wok. And if you don't have a wok, you can use a frying pan uh, just make sure that it's heated up really well. In Chinese, there's a saying that the wok needs to be heated up 
so that it can give it a wok flavor. And it's a kind of a smoky flavor, but in direct translation, it's like wok breath. <laughs> I think it's hot enough now. I can see steam coming up. You mean smoke? Smoke. Two tablespoons of vegetable oil and half of the beef. Just stirring this up and cooking it until it's about 80, 70 to 80 percent done. And then we're going to transfer it into a bowl and get the second batch going. Okay, adding another two tablespoons of oil. Removing the second batch, adding one more tablespoon of oil, adding ginger, and the onions. Oh, smells so good. I love the smell of ginger and onions cooking. We cooked it for about two minutes. I'm adding my beef back in all the juices and then the sauce and green onions cook for another minute that's it we're done that was fast right yeah really you totally didn't need any fancy device for this one no well a walk <laughs> I am starting with three pounds of chicken thighs and we like dark meat so that's why I'm using chicken thighs. I am adding two tablespoons of soy sauce. A tablespoon of oyster sauce. Tablespoon of Shaoxing wine. A tablespoon of vegetable oil. have two teaspoons of cornstarch and a teaspoon of sugar. I am going to grate this ginger and just put it into the marinade. Okay, mixing this up and we're gonna let this marinate for about half an hour. But if you wanted to do this the night before, that's also a really great idea because the longer you let it marinate, the more flavorful it is. So at least half an hour up to overnight. While my chicken is marinating, I'm going to prepare my green onions that I'm just going to put on top of the chicken in the packets. And I'm going to slice them up into slivers. You don't have to if you don't want to. I just, I think by cutting them down, they have a bit more flavor, and then if you don't want to eat them, they're easy to pick off. I'm gonna try making these in the Instant Pot today, but my grandmother used to make it in the oven, and if you're gonna do it in the oven, it only takes about half an hour. Just preheat your oven to 375, and you can cook them for about 30 to 35 minutes. So I have my parchment paper already cut up, and I have just one thigh. I'm gonna put some green onions on top and then we're going to wrap it up. I'm gonna take the two edges, bring them together, fold them down. I think what I'm gonna do is just twist the ends. I think that's easier. That's all you really want, just to make sure that it's sealed and that juices aren't gonna come pouring out until you open it over your rice. The reason why I am doing it in packets still, even for the Instant Pot, is because with the Instant Pot, you have to add water to create the pressure. And if I put the chicken just into 
the pot, then the sauce is going to be diluted. And I don't want that. I want all of the juices from the chicken to go right on my rice and not to be diluted by the water. I can't believe how good it smells. It's raw too. <laughs> you know, if you don't like ginger, I would just not grate it into the marinade, but instead just cut it into slivers that you can also just pick off if you don't want it. I've added a cup of water into my Instant Pot and I am putting in the trivet. And then we're just gonna lay the chicken down. Putting on the lid, locking it into place. Make sure the ceiling knob is on ceiling. And we're just gonna cook it for 10 minutes on high pressure. That's it. I quick released the pressure and we're just gonna open it up now. Mmm, it smells so yummy. I'm like, I'm gonna do it with my hands. It should be fine. As long as I bring up the right packet. Okay, I don't know if you can see already, like all the juices in there. Oh yeah. Right? It's like a giant dumpling. Oh my goodness. Oh, I can't wait. But let's see what it looks like on the inside. I have a little bowl of rice here. Pour the sauce on top. Wow, that sauce has got like... Well, we're just doing this... ...pieces in there of like the ginger and whatnot. And this is just for the taste. You would have probably more rice on your plate if this was a full dinner, plus veggies. That sauce would go on top of everything. Quite a few viewers have asked what type of vegetables I like to eat when we make Asian or Chinese dishes. So today we're going to prepare three of my favorite and they're gonna be simple and easy to do. So let's get started. These vegetables are pretty popular, especially in Vancouver. You can find them in the regular supermarkets and they're relatively inexpensive and they're great with Chinese dishes. And the way I prepare them is always just very simple, not a whole lot of flavor added to them. Probably the most popular that you would know is this one. This is called gailan. So gailan essentially is kind of like broccoli. It has like kind of a broccoli flower. Well, my dad always told me that if you start to see them flower, like these white florets, little flowers, to take them off because that's where the bugs hang out, he said. So, <laughs> unless you want to eat bugs, <laughs> remove them. That's a pretty solid advice. <laughs> also, if they have a lot of, like if a lot of the flowers have opened up, then it's not really great to buy because then they're not so tender, they're older and will be harder to eat. When I get them home, I usually just soak them in salt water because salt will kill any bugs in them and then just rinse them really well a couple of times, especially in between uh, where the leaves grow because that their bugs can hide in there as well and dirt. So just give them a good rinse. And then I'll trim off the bottom and leave them whole. Because you can also chop these ones up for stir fries because of the texture. They hold its shape and texture better in stir fries than those other vegetables. These are baby bok choy and I prefer them more than the, the large ones. And it's just because they're tender, they're easy to eat, easy to cook. When you're washing them, make sure that you get into in between all the layers as well. Just run water through them. And then again, I like to trim these at the bottom just a little bit, like not much off because it was dry in the store. And then I just cut them in half and that I cook them like that. 
I don't cook them whole. That's just a preference. You can cook them whole if you wanted to. Okay. And this one is called Yao Choi Sum. I grew up with it being called Choi Sum, but lately, in the last several years, I've noticed that it's called Yu Choi in the stores. I'm not sure why the change, but anyways, make sure to cleanse inside in between the leaves. So with the Yao Choi, you're looking for yellow flowers and the same thing. If you see them, just pluck them off. If there's too many of them, again, it means that it's a little bit older, so the greens are not so tender. But they do say that the most tender part of the choy is here, like where the bud is. So if you like that part, my kids like the leafy part. I like the stalks. So I think it's just a matter of preference. When you're at the store, make sure that the vegetable doesn't have this little white dot. Because that little white dot means that it's getting old. The inside is starting to hollow out which will also make it more tough to eat. So if you see that, generally I try to cut it off and if it keeps going, I just cut off until there isn't any anymore. So that part is the starting to dry out and yeah, sometimes you can be deceived. It doesn't show right away that it's hollow on the inside, but some are really obvious. So try to avoid that if possible. So this is what you're looking for without the white dot. But sometimes when I cut into it, oh no, this one's good. Growing up, I remember always having a green leafy vegetable at the dinner table. We're just bringing a pot of water to boil and then we'll show you how simple this really is. Okay, I'm gonna add about two teaspoons of salt and I'm using sea salt here, but you can use whatever you want. And about a tablespoon of vegetable oil or whatever oil you like. And I'm going to cook the yao choy first. And it just all goes in and you're just cooking it for about a minute. Just push all the leaves down into the water and essentially when the water comes back to a boil, it's done. Okay, we're almost there and that's it. And depending on what else is for dinner, if it's like really saucy, I will just like not even add anything else to it, that's it. Otherwise, I would serve with just like a little bit of oyster sauce. Okay, next we're going to do the gai lan. And so our water is still salted. I'm gonna add a little bit more vegetable oil because some of that oil would have clinged to the vegetables I just pulled out. And for gai lan, I always add about half a teaspoon of sugar. And we're just gonna dunk these in as well. Now these ones can take an extra minute, so two minutes to blanch and cook. And why do you put the sugar in there? Oh, Gai Lan is a little bit bitter, so that little bit of sugar just takes it out. I'm gonna bring that to a boil and then let it cook for another minute after that, so a total of two minutes. And you can test the tenderness of the vegetable by just stabbing it into the stock see if it'll go through easily or not. This should be done. Look at how nice and green they are. Okay, when they go a little bit yellow, you know you've gone too far. Okay, with the bok choy, I like to stir fry them and not just blanch them. So add about a tablespoon of oil in a frying pan and I'm using about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of chicken bouillon. And just stir this around a little bit. And then we're gonna cover it and cook it for about a minute. Usually after washing bok choy, it holds enough liquid that 
It's also steaming and being fried at the same time. Okay, and we're done. Just gonna add a little bit of oyster sauce right in the middle here for dipping. You don't need much because oyster sauce is pretty salty. These are some of our favorite homestyle Cantonese meals and we hope that you will enjoy them too. For more recipes just like this, check them out and I will see you over there.